No. Oh, okay. We'll get on my other phone. Yeah. And uh, I expect uh, Sister Noble to be here in a little bit. Okay. So, uh, what, 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 what YouTube are you live on? Um, I'm on uh, Reality's Temple Internet Ministry. Okay, Internet Ministry. Okay. What do I go in, brother? Say what? Hey, what's up? What's up, brother Tali? Hey, what's going on, uh, brother? Uh, how you been Man, doing? Much, bro. Uh, the same old thing here, there, and everywhere, brother. How you been doing, brother Tali, man? Man, brother, I'm, I'm doing well as expected. I'm still in. Uh oh. Because uh, I'm stuck right there you, go. Now, you know what I mean? Can you repeat yourself? Um, Brother Tali has some um, difficulty, and you got cut off. All I heard was just, just that you just said that, you know, I'm just, you know, and then all of a sudden you got cut off and whatever. Can you repeat yourself there, Brother Tali? I was saying the position in life I'm in right now, I'm still financially stuck, and I need to, uh, that's why I'm going back to school so I can get some education to negate that so I could go on on here and get myself up out of this rut. And, uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> right what are you going to school for? What are you going to school for? The American dollar still good. <laughs> <laughs> Why the American dollar still good? Yeah. Man, I want to have uh, some to it so I can do the things I need to do. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, are you working on your, of course, you're working on your bachelor's or, or, or trade or... I'm working on my GED so I can get into truck driving. Oh, the truck driving. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, I thought you were going to school to get you, you know, a bachelor's or liberal arts or something like that. Okay. No, no, no I'm trying to get my uh, adult education to plumber so I can go on and enroll in, uh, I'm, well, I'm working on getting my adult education to plumber so I can go on and work in. Work on getting into truck truck driving school after that. Okay. Yep. That's what me and brother Tom uh, Talik does, man. Now look at me. I mean, I got three college degrees. And mm -hmm. look what I was what I'm doing. And this is a, right. like I told before, man. I said I never I was trying to tell this young guy when I was in El Paso, a kid, man, because I I'm always at all when I see youngsters doing the job that we do that do OTR and they're you know, they're man, let me be quiet, man. God damn, I told myself I'm gonna be quiet. This is not oh, relative to you. Oh, okay. Bro. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate it. But um, it's just very ironic and what have you. Stuff. The very thing that I despise, and I, I never had the inclination to ever be a flatbed truck driver. Hardcore OTR, over-the-road truck driver. And mm -hmm. bam, look what I do. It's a job that I like to do. If you go on my YouTube, or uh, you'll see a video that I make, a video, and, and it, 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 you know, because I make motivational, um, some motivational videos. And I, I made a video where it describes how, why, what I mean by quote unquote, why do I love my job? And I never thought, I never had the inclination to ever think that I would ever like being a, a, a truck driver. I thought it was a bunch of rednecks with no, t uh, with a bunch <laughs> of rednecks. I just, rednecks and all that, it ain't none of them. When I was, man, it's just crazy. I mean, brother Talik, Talik knows my story, how I end up being a truck driver. Uh -huh. Or I pretty much relinquished my, you know, college degree, which I was a somewhat a counselor. And, you know, I got a double major in sociology and psychology and I have, a, um, you know, behavioral science. And, you know, and I end up found out, found out that I didn't even like to be a dang a counselor or pursue that as being a dang truck driver. But like I said, if it's different shows with different folks, I mean, if somebody was out there and they take pride in what they do, if they were plucking chickens or peeling oranges for a living, I salute them, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then I respect that, but it's a good endeavor. At least for me, I think you'll like it, though, brother Talib. Oh yeah, yes sir. Yes sir. I'm an international truck driver. They say I can get an international license and drive across the border and do uh -huh. something like that too. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you, you know, uh -huh. the truck, you know, it can, you know, give you an. Uh, well, I don't know, you know, like in the, in the United States. The furthest you can do is go cross border Canada and Mexico. That's the best you probably can do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, but if you go, if you really, if you get a work company that really does business there, you can really actually, you know, go to Mexico or Canada and really spend some time there and get to know folks and 
things like that, you know, outside of this country here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't have a passport. I mean, I, I mean, uh, I don't have that credential yet to go. And I ain't trying to get one. I ain't trying to go to no Canada or whatever and stuff. They're even going to Alaska too, man. But that's where the big money's at, though. But I just don't feel like messing with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hey, peace, peace uh, Michael Perry and Scott L.C. in the temple. What's going on, y'all? Michael Perry and Scott L.C. Mm -hmm. Yep. I bet to y'all have seen a lot of a lot of drove up and down that West Coast a lot, boy. Because I heard that driving up down that West Coast is a pretty sight. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, it is, bro. Yes, it is. <laughs> Especially like Montana, but I don't like that bad boy during the winter time. I, I bet your brother can leave. Uh uh, uh, thank you, man. I don't play around. I, I if I see something, I feel like I don't feel like I'm gonna drive in that weather where it's not suitable for me to drive. I don't hesitate to tell my job I ain't driving in that bad boy. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and I, that one thing I like about the place that I work at, where they they give me the you know. The discretion, I mean, not the discretion, but they give me the choice whether you know to make that determination. You know, but you're gonna have some cats out there. They see one dang, uh, god dang flake of snow, and they gonna call in and say, "I can't drive," and what have you and stuff. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> so. But yeah, bro, I'm, I'm, that's good for you, brother Talib. That's what's up, bro. You know, and you can and and, and Angel Snuffs up been driving trucks since Moses had short pants. So <laughs> if you, <laughs> I mean, he's been doing it since Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter was president, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. Let me see who was president. Reagan. It, Reagan. Yeah, you said in eighty one when you started. Yeah, Reagan. Well, after the eighty two. Uh huh. Like November eighty two or something like that. Hmm. Dang. Yeah, that's Ronald Reagan. Then you're right. Ronald Reagan. Peace and blessings, there, uh, brother Michael Perry. Again, man, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, man. Um, I was looking at the chat. Yeah, I mean, y'all can chop it up because. Myself and Brother Pali, we just got off a live stream with the with the brother that was very upset with us. <laughs> I, don't know. I, don't know. I mean, I mean, I don't know what's going on. You know, uh, what, what was going on? Who was upset with you? You know, brother, brother Bakari. I was on his live stream not too long ago. You know, Bakari, uh, like a peaceful get together. Uh -huh. Did you remember seeing that video? No, 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 no. I mean, you'll you'll see me on Dagger Squad, and you'll see me on um. Uh -huh. I'm, uh, you'll see me on Team Osiris, but I don't know. I, the only time that I ever seen a video is that uh, 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 I, I don't know his name. Uh, uh, he he went he went he, he went hard on you. I like, so I told I said, man, that brother's going oh, hard yeah. on you. I it was man, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. man I was laughing my ass <laughs> off. I don't know that brother. I don't know his name is Alquan or something like that. Oh man, I was I man, I was I almost drove off the road. <laughs> grabbing my stomach. Alcon was going, he, 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 I'm going to be real, bro. Mm -hmm. Alcon said some things to you, and that shit mm -hmm. was hilarious. And then your ass, <laughs> God, I'm sorry, man. I want to keep it focused, but that shit was hilarious. <laughs> God, man, I, I was grabbing my damn stomach crying when I was hearing you and Alcon on debate, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Alcon, Alcon said, "When you gonna when you gonna start the Mississippi campaign?" He said, "When are you gonna show your face?" And he said, "He said, Alcon said, whenever you uh, start that Mississippi campaign." <laughs> man, it was hilarious, man. Uh, you know I me; mean? I'm a straight ass nigga, man. I'm gonna be straight up. I ain't none of that right to probe, whatever. I'm just me. You know that. Uh -huh. And I'm just telling this shit was hilarious, man. I think his name is Guy. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Guy something, guy, guy, guy something, man. And it just happened to pop on my feed. And I said, man, he's talking about Mississippi campaign. So I listened to the whole entire lecture. I mean, he made some good points, criticisms towards you. But when uh -huh. that Al y'all too, oh my God, that, that, that was, that was some goddamn, uh, what's that, uh, what's that dang show with, uh, <laughs> New York? Stand up New York comedy back in uh with uh <laughs> Martin Lawrence and shit, man. That, that had me laugh. I ain't laughed like that in a long time, bro. <laughs> but when, hey, that that's happened what, to that's another guy though. What what was going on, man? Say so what now? What would you have you and brother Tali was having some uh some um uh, uh, harsh criticism or disagreement with somebody? 
God, that guy that you're talking about, him and oh, okay. and, and, and and his brother, brother Bakari, and they got upset over something Talib said. Mm -hmm. I didn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. They got all upset. They came to my channel. Talib got his own channel. What you on my channel for? Right. You know, so that cat, Moise Muhammad, uh, yeah. Bakari. Yeah. I don't know who the, uh, I don't know those guys or what have you. I don't, but I, don't you know, I don't bother them. If I, the best I can do, because I know they too emotional for me. The best I can do is just say hi and bye. Because if you really start to talk, they're going to start getting all upset. And <laughs> I don't have time. Yeah. I don't yeah. have time for it. I just don't. Anyway, mm. I, you know, I mirror, I mirror Talib's videos and put them on my channel. Mm hmm. And they listened to him and got upset with him because he, he was calling pro black nigga. And I'm like, hell, y'all call me black nigga. What the hell is you upset about? Mm -hmm. They call black people, period, nigga. Who knows how many times they done called me nigga? What you, what you upset about? Mm. Mm. But, but to live is not supposed to say or, or, or reference the pro blacks as being niggas. But they reference to, to themselves as being niggas. And they call other people niggas. And other mm. things shouldn't be called the people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they call they call you nigger. They call you bedwin. They call you a coon. They call you uh, a, a mud rat. You know, if you're biracial or whatever. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. See, they want to be able... They, I, I guess they thought because we got together, which nobody offered me no apology for what they've done to me in the past because I didn't do a damn thing to these people. The mm -hmm. only thing I ever do is speak on your ideology. Like I, like if you and I was going back and forth, Brother Gary, you know because we went back and forth back in the day. Sure. I don't sure. care about how you dress, what clothes you wear, and you drive a truck, and you know I don't care about no stuff like that. I stay on the subject matter and stick with whatever that is. They get upset Oh, you bald headed, uh, you a fag. <laughs> you know, going through all those kind of crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Your mama weighed 3,000 pounds, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, that type of stuff. No, no, I don't have time for no silly stuff like that. You know, get out. You know, I don't have time for it. And uh, I guess what the things that I have to see, this is it. If I if we aren't supposed to be able to express ourselves over these ideologies that you don't own, that means mm -hmm. you shut your damn mouth and stop talking about Christianity and stop talking about white people and all these other things that insult people and offend people. Since you are easily offended, you don't want nobody to offend you, then you need to shut your mouth and don't offend others. Simple as that. I think I think, brother, uh, what they're doing when I do like when I watch that brother guy. Uh, I mean, of course, I mean, you're my partner, my friend, but like, you know, that's why I'll be on Dagger Squad. You know, I'll be on Amon Raw. I, I get on the live sh chats. My mm -hmm. biggest emphasis, I mean, I'm a I'm a, 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 a layman scholar. I mean, that's my forte, as you already know. Yeah. I'm, my, my emphasis on the in the black conscious community is when I made those videos about the fringes of the black conscious community, which I wrote and, ma and made those videos about, what, 10 years ago, was my critique from my personal experience. Mm -hmm. um, when I used to be a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I rebuke pseudos. That's the reason why I be on Dagger Squad. I mean, uh, Garfield put my video up. Uh -huh. I talked about the black anti-intellectuals that's um, proliferating in the black conscious. My thing is, I'm a big person on emphasis of objective, um, be, of, of, of the authenticity of scholarship. Mm -hmm. and that's my biggest emphasis and people to be objective and be utilized critical thinking so it can incite and ignite and provoke, invoke people to be more critical researchers. However, when I when I watched that video by Guy, I mean, he does have some good points, I mean, about your criticism and what have you stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, like with you, you're a very harsh critic on people's religion. <laughs> and, and, and when we look at the sociological and the sentimental dimensions that go with it, you have to realize, too, is that I learned, too, in psychology, like I remember back then, um, how to approach cult members and back then you know um uh, the, the worst thing that you can do to a cult uh, cult member to deprogram them is to attack the cult leader so you have to find another avenue 
and a different approach to reach that person. So when you make criticism about religion and you're an extreme harsh critic on religion, and a lot of these people subscribe to the, these Pacific religion, and when you attack them, I mean, it comes with the territory. I know you're what have you. Yeah. When you when you attack and criticize them or their religion, you're attacking them. Right. That's so right. they're going to come with a knee jerk re re reaction and saying, that's this is personal. So when you see it like Brother Guy, I watched his video and he made some good points. Mm -hmm. So he's doing the same thing in return on you as much as you criticize religion and people and individuals. They do it in a somewhat way. Sometimes they get divert what they use and homonyms and they attack your character rather than the yeah. substance or what have you and stuff. But that's how black folks are. Like, I mean, you see my videos on Facebook. You see when I'm around, I make a lot of, I talk shit. Mm -hmm. And that's how black folks do. We, I hide side, I will talk bad about you, but that's how we talk. At least in my, my, my inner circle. We talk so bad that you will want to feel like you want to evaporate. And just like you see my video that I put, I always dedicate to my best friend who died of an aneurysm. You uh -huh. see videos of him, and just like he said, if you can't take jokes, you don't need to be around us. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? You don't need, you need to get, get on whatever. But I understand. That's what I was just trying to say. When I guess those guys, I mean, like I said, man, let's be real, man. A lot of these guys that's on these damn social medias, they can they can project this this image that, you know, they can get behind the, the, um, the social media and utilize this um, this apparatus called YouTube, and they have a lot of knowledge about some African history, and they have some kind of, of Dr. Khalid Mohammed um, vigor to what have you. And then, then when they get on here, you know, they, they, you know they're going to put on the template and the facade that they're 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 activists. But behind, like I said in my last video, behind closed doors, and I meet so many people, they're not nothing like what they are. They just like any other, and I'm going to use this thing just like any other nigga that's out here. But when they get on here, they're going to they gonna act like there's some um, Dr. York or some um, Dr. Khalid or some Louis Farrakhan. But like if like I said, when I made that up, that, that last, when I was in Macon, Georgia, I said, like, I bumped into so many people. When I meet them, they ain't nothing but showbiz revolutionary. So a lot of these um, black folks that you see on here, I know, but I'm going to be real, just niggas, just like, so they, 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 when you get them mad, then that's when you see the true, the, 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 themselves. And then they break this little um, this um, image that they project in this superficial image and what have it, that there's some super social black revolutionary. And then you see the niggas come out there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just being real. So I'm off the mic. I told you myself, I'm going to minimize myself being on the mic. You see the, 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 the gritty, the down gritty Negro coming out of my <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yes, sir. That that's, I, that's why I always says, and I said in that life, be yourself. I don't act like I'm some righteous and know it all. Or uh, I'm, I'm I, I mean, he's, I mean, I don't know if you have me on Facebook. Brother Talik has me on Facebook. I share everything about from my kids, my family, my friends, me barbecuing, me having a good time. You know, I, I'm living life and what have you. But my biggest thing, I'm a big critic of. Um, I'm an anti pseudo person, and that's oh. why I participate and engage on. Um, you know. Uh, uh, God dang, um, t um, uh, the Dagger Squad. I mean, I, you know, because I was going off on what having. Uh, last, I was on there last week. Yeah, I was on there last week. Yep. But the, as far as the criticism, man, they always going to get criticized. I mean, I get that. You see it on my Facebook. How many comments I have, you know. And sometimes I antagonize people in a, in a way. I use satire. I try to re replay reverse psychology. And you see a lot of people on my on my page. See, I get a lot of people. I get whites, Mexicans. I get all spectrums of different social and economic, I mean, not economic, yeah, um, uh, um, background. Like when I'm speaking, when I'm, you know, talking shit about politics, I get a lot of people, white folks, Mexicans, and blacks, and fe and all, and both genders, male and females, involved. Uh -huh. you know what I'm saying so. I find ways to get people engaged. So I don't play an act of exclusion. I I use an act of inclusion because I like a lot a lot of people to part participate by inciting them. And I, you know, and I, not, I sometimes provoke them, and I, I'm a little provocateur. Yeah, but a lot of people knows me personally, and they know that my, yes, sir. Yes, you do. Because I done seen some, done seen some polls, people talk to you, and I know everybody, y'all, you know, your group is cool, but they're like they want to shoot you or something, you know, assassinate you. Hey, that, I'm, I'm, I can take that. That ain't, that ain't nothing. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, and I keep my composure. 
That's yeah. what I'm trying to tell you. I mean, just like you saying these guys, you know, I guess those guys that you said are criticism, you know, um, I was just, I was, my only recommendation is, is that, you know, kind of a look, I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying that you don't, but kind of, uh, you know, like shed away the, um, the, 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 the yaya, the fluff and see what they're actually saying. Because I've learned too, um, learning in my personal progression in advance of, 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 of scholarship and learning and knowledge is that again, like I say, in my last thing that I was with you is that not only that, you know, that you're right, you also got to know when you're wrong. And then yeah. listen to your critics, listen to your critics and what have you, and listen to your critics and be as objective as you possibly can, because we're going to put this subjective in the defense wall in an academicism. But I've learned too, like in, in scholarship, you got to learn of correspondence and, and listen to the critics. And if the critics and they have something that, that has validity or credibility and is merited on that, then I look at it and say, damn, I'm kind of wrong or erroneous and I'm flawed and let me correct that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I listen to my critics, though. Yes, sir. Yes, so uh, that could do something to strengthen you. Like mm -hmm. when guy, I mean, he made some good points. I mean, you could take what that guy was saying and then say, damn, you know, he is right in that thing in a way. So let me look and indulge more in research so I can um, uh, 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 give more, um, you know, power into my campaign and my agenda with the Mississippi Exodus. Um, the Mississippi campaign. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, brother Talik, go ahead, man. Uh, brother Talik, doing something there, man? No, I'm, I'm, I'm listening, brother. I'm, I'm on board. Well, you know, I was feeding my face. <laughs> <laughs> matter of fact, <clears throat> matter of fact, uh, now what happened to Gary? He gone. Gary. Okay, he come back. Yeah, you disappeared okay. for a second. But uh, hey, I can't find um, uh, I can't find that uh, re reality temple on Earth internet ministry. Just like it's spelled right here on the screen. Okay. And if you uh, go to the channel, I should I should be live. Oh, got you. I got you. Okay. All right, got you. All right. Okay. See, you're dealing with people like, I don't know how to explain it. They, yes, I do. I know how to explain it. And, and Sister uh, Frances Crest Wilson even talked about it, how immature we are in the mind. Now, look, here I am. So I'm a country boy. Now, I don't know if you see this or not. I'm drinking out of an old chunky salsa jar. Don't have nothing to do with nothing. Those Negroes are spent two hours at, at Talik drink out of a chunky salsa jar. <laughs> what they got to do with anything? <laughs> They'll talk about that for two hours. What? You, for real? Yeah. You know why I drink out of a chunky salsa jar? Because I want to. Because I want to. You know and I know that I can <laughs> afford to have some glass. I, I drink out of the truck because I want to. And if I put something that got bubbles, and if I put something that got bubbles in it, I can put the lid on it, help keep the keep the bubble. Also, also, oh, my sister is here. Mm -hmm. And she come to join the party, my sister Nova Levine. What's up? Hey, how you doing? Oh, mm -hmm. right now. hey, how you doing? What, yeah. we, what we talking about? Well, right now we just kicking the breeze. But the subject, the subject that we chosen for this video, and since Sister Nova is here, we can go ahead and get started with the uh, with the topic. But I was just talking about what you're still doing. Can you hear brother uh Talib? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? How's the sister doing? You're breaking up a little hey, bit. Hey, uh, hey, how you doing, sister? You breaking up a little bit. Okay. You're underwater. Yeah. You sound like you're underwater there, brother Talib. He's on he's on speakerphone. For some reason, his phone won't 
he actually had the same phone I have, but for some reason his phone won't connect to this. Mm. I don't know what the deal is. So okay. he's on he's on speakerphone. So he's gonna be a little, you know, choppy or whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, but sister, I was just talking about how silly these people are. Cause like I'm drinking out of a saucer, a saucer jar. Mm. You know, with nap on it. And, mm. and I said the reason why I do that is because I want to. <laughs> Everybody know I don't have to do it. And plus it's I not that you can't afford to go get cups. Yeah, right. It's not bad. It's just, you know, something you want to do. Because I want to do. Just just like I drink out of a carton. I don't I rarely drink out of cups yep. in my house. Rarely. I drink out of bottles and cartons. Yes. But see, we're dealing with people. And see, this is this is the, the root of it. You're dealing with people that want to control and dominate, tell you when to take a dump, <laughs> you know, tell you when to get up. Tell you when to scratch oh, your no. ass. They just want to tell you when to scratch your ass too. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. They got, and sister Noah, you know we talk about the problem. Right? I know, I know. With all these I know. Things, uh, control dominating problems. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they got real problems. They got when real it comes problems. To dominating and controlling. Yeah. That's I what mean, I'm like, everybody want to control you. Yeah. Tell you what to do. Ain't no slave going to tell me what to do. I already got a person <laughs> that, that make a, a slave out of me. I don't need no, no other. Ain't no Negro slave going to tell me what to do. They're not in a position to tell me what to do. Then they come over and get mad and angry and upset. Cause see, that's the bottom line. You got to be an African, or you got to be a Muslim. I look, all I gotta do is be black and die, nigga. Well, what about being a Christian? You gotta be a Christian too. Oh yeah, you gotta be a Christian. Believe in my Lord Jesus Christ. That don't do a damn thing for you. You bring it up, bro. Nothing. Nothing. And, 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 and that, they should be. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, you you should be all right. I mean, you was the same way you was on the, on the other the, the other live stream. Oh, okay. Yeah. But this, that's what it's about. It's about trying to tell people what they can and what they should not do and blah. Look, this is about do you want freedom just as an equality? You don't have to worry about my ass and I want to scratch. You don't have to worry about that. I got that. I got this under control. <laughs> you want freedom just as an equality, but they don't. Somebody got some back uh echo. Is that you, brother Gary? You're playing the video? Yeah, that my I'm trying to I'm trying to get I'm, I'm using two I, this I'm using my mobile phone and I'm using this phone here. And I'm okay. trying to and I'll find okay, I found him. I have heard what you said, bro. Okay. Well you a mess, man. <laughs> I'm not trying. To, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just trying to keep it real. I'm just yeah, trying to I keep know, it real. Man. I don't yeah. uh, Nobody comes to this platform, and I try to tell them what to do. If you smoke, that's your business. If you, if you know, if you sell a little booty on the corner, hey, that's your business. I would suggest that you don't do that, but I mean, that's oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, you, you, you who ride it, ain't you there today, boy? You on one today, ain't you there snow? No, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm getting high <laughs> <laughs> Is it, yep. it's that uh, fermented party <laughs> song? <laughs> I think you can hang around me too much or something, man. Because you see me on Facebook acting a fool, too, don't you? I be talking shit to everybody, man. But it's having fun, though. God damn. See, that's another thing, too. Yep. They take things too, too damn serious. I mean, they do. They yeah. do. Yeah. We are in a serious situation, but you don't have to take things so damn, 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 damn serious. It ain't that serious, y'all. Slow down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just like that nigga guy. Yeah, yeah. black conscious nigga. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he got all emotional. Talking about, man, I ain't a nigga. I ain't a slave. 
Tell the white man that. Right. <laughs> oh, tell crap. the white man that. Damn. I bet he'll disagree. Yeah. I'm a damn thing. Uh-huh. And then he was telling us about all the things the pro-black folks are supposed to do. Right before this live stream, I was checking my subscriptions and Sonetta TV was, was uh, had a video and they were showing the Black Power Parade. All these mm -hmm. Negroes in costume and saluting and walking them down the street. I'm like, what? Is this what the revolution of Turkey? Was it a nation of Islam? It was, it was a little bit of everybody out there. Is, is it a nation of Islam? It was a little bit of everybody. I think, I, Mason. I think that's, I, I've seen the Nawapins out there. The Nawap, Nawapins are out there too. A little bit of everybody in their, in their costume. Your followers? Yeah, in their colorful Yeah, colors. yeah I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, and and, and, and they should have huh. waited for Halloween. It would have been better okay. for Halloween. Uh, <laughs> that's what that's what Black Power is to them. Parade, they parade like this—the Thanksgiving Day parade or something. Christmas Macy. I'm so, I'm shocked to win a big Macy turkey flying over. That's not what this. That's not what the 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 uh, struggle is about. Parades and marches and. All this nonsense. Can you imagine Nat Turner having a parade? These crackers, uh, crackers lynching them day and night and raping the women and everything. And they told, let's go out and have a parade. Really? Uh, <laughs> I can yeah. guarantee you the people in the 1960s weren't interested in no parade because them, them crackers was uh, shooting, uh, breaking down the Black Panthers' uh, doors and killing them people and, and, and doing all kinds of stuff. I bet you they weren't talking about thinking about no damn parade. <laughs> What's up there, Dope Coke? <coughs> they've uh, uh, keep what happened to the system? You know, because because he keep bringing the heat. <laughs> but see, I want to say this to these black conscious folks: more uh -oh. and more people are coming out and speaking against this pro-black stuff. Not just pro-black, but all the fascists, the Kemetic, the Nation of Islam. They are coming out and they're speaking against it because everybody is waking up. They're starting to see that this is a bunch of nonsense. Mm -hmm. so don't blame me. I love, I'm glad I'm joining the party. But uh, it's not only me. Do a YouTube search. There's a lot of folks out there speaking against pro black stuff because y'all fake. You detrimental, you, you vulgar, and you nasty. You keep talking about how much you love black folks. You call a person a fool and a nigga in, in, a, in a quick second. But guess what? Let me put that. Let me put a dope coke on there. See that, that boy, brother, he comes from he comes from a generation. Saying hello to y'all, wonderful soul people. Damn stupid. And see, that's us. That's a label for that we came, it came up. It came up out of our souls. You know, these people won't hand me down. I don't care about all that African committed, all that old plagiarized bull crap. Soul is something that I live. I know what it's about. It came from us. We even had our own type of language, our own type of style. It's us. You can't. I don't want to be compared to no African or no Native American or nothing. I want to be me. Except you want to be yourself. Right. And on that note, we're going to get into the... Hey, yeah, go ahead. Hey, Bacardi going to talk about that it was West African language mixed in that. That's a lie. All, all we knew, all them slaves knew was English. 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 Because if they spoke some other language, chances are they'd probably been killed because, you know, that was against the law. Right. If they were caught speaking another language, those people was murdered. For hundreds of years, you was denied religion and you was denied the right to read and write, period, for hundreds of years. So where the hell did all these African religions? This stuff did not come till after so-called freedom. Then you began to, these Africans and other folks start coming into the United States and you and things of this nature. Now, I did hear something about the Gullah people. They said that they was basically unaffected. It's a possibility, some of it. I'm not gonna call the man a liar. But basically, you know, and I all we all know, we speak English. 
Right, exactly. Ebonics is about English, okay? That's just right. the bottom line. Let's keep it real. Right. <laughs> so let's get into this uh topic. But before we get into our topic, I got to make uh, our announcements because these announcements are very important. If you don't, if you, if you don't want to hear the announcement, uh, kick rocks, don't come back. Because huh? you, you got to support our people here. I want you to support our sister, because ladies first. Got to support our sister, Nona Levine, her new website. And where's that website? Because I just put it up there. Put it up there. Her new website, ancientcreationmyths.com. The link is in the description box of this video. And all the latest videos have this link. Support her. She's a writer. She's not really a video maker. But she's a good writer. Wonderful writer, excellent writer. Matter of fact, I hope to get together one day and she write my my biography. We need to do that because I'm just because I'm lazy, you know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just lazy about it. But uh, support our system, Nova Levine, in the description box, ancientcreationmyths.com. Do it today. Then we want you to support our brother, Talib. His link is in the description box. Support our brother to live, Eric Bell. Support him. And uh, then next, our brother, because he's down here with us, got to give him, got to give him his props. Known this brother for years. Known this brother for years. Brother Gary, he's Cool Cool Cutter on uh, YouTube. He also has a Facebook page, Gary Wilson. I have his, I have his, uh, YouTube, I just put it up. I'll put it back up later. I put up his uh, link to his YouTube channel. He's Gary Wilson on on Facebook. Support that brother. Friend him on Facebook. Also, as you know, I don't ask y'all for a damn dime, but there are brothers and sisters who have come to me over the years, and just recently, they really want to show their appreciation and send the brother a couple of dollars or whatever. And I, I'm going to break down after all these years. I'm going to go ahead and let y'all, you know, break me off a little something, something if you want to. So in the description box, uh, register with Zell, Zelly, I think that's how it's called, Zelly. And uh, you can go ahead and do that. It's fast and immediate. It's a real cool app. You can put it also put it on your phone. Also, a brother suggested, you know, when you do, break a brother off a little something. Why don't I do a custom video for you? So send me an email. Tell me what you, what subject you want us to talk about. We'll do that. I give you a shout out and let the audience know this video is brought to you by Dope Coke One. This video is brought to you by Brother Michael Perry. And then if you don't want me to shout you out, just, just, I'll just say a wonderful subscriber brings this presentation to you today. So if you so I can we can do custom videos just for speak on the topics and the subject. But as you know, real truth has no price. I don't sell that which is good for us to raise us up out of that condition. There's no price I can put on that. However, when my biography comes out, that's not free. You know, that's gonna be 20 bucks or whatever, you know, I, because that, that's my own personal story. You want to know about me? Because And really, personally, it's not really none of your business. But if you want to know about it, then we're going to charge. Might give a whole lot of e-books away for free, too. Because that's just how I am. That's just how I roll. Because it's about you. I don't, I'm don't. i not here for money and profits and fame. All that kind of good stuff. But so that's our announcement. Support Sister Noble Living. Support our brother Talib. Support our brother uh, Cool Cool Cutter, Brother Gary. And if you want to, you can donate. With the announcements out the way, we're going to start talking, deal with our subject matter. And the topic that we've chosen is Angel Snub Nub 7 and Talib are two old, and two old and stupid men. That's up. We're old and we're stupid. Two incredible adjectives. An adjective describes the noun, right, Brother Gary? <laughs> We're 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 old we're, we're old and we're stupid. Well, at least they made us men because they said that we gay. I guess we gay men. We're too old and stupid gay men. 
See, I'm comfortable in mine. I don't guess that I don't trip off of it. I do not, I do not trip off of that crazy stuff. I'm gonna keep the I'm gonna get the ball rolling because some of us I'm, actually we're not really old men. Uh, we would be considered middle age. But I don't have no problem being an old man. Because the reality is a lot of y'all ain't gonna make it. You're gonna wish you was an old man. It was a it's a it was a it's 23 people, 23 young children in the St. Louis area right now that will never see my age. They died under the age of 13. 23 of them right here in the city of St. Louis. Drive by shootings, some kind of murder. 23 of them. They're not going to be able to. Get yeah, this year, within the last few months, un unsolved murders. So they're not going to be able to to to. You're not going to be able to call them an old man or old woman. And you might not make it either. See, I already been where you think that you're going to go, and you might not make it. It took a long time to get here. It's a lot of things because um, the, the, the reality of it is I did not think I was going to be here because I was doing some crazy stuff I thought was going to get me killed. I was burglarizing houses. Yes, I've done that. I was burglarizing houses. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a teenager, I was burglarizing houses. I was committing vandalism, tearing stuff up. <clears throat> I was stealing from, from drug dealers. Well, not real drug dealers, but them, it was people that was growing weed. And I found out where their weed was at, and I stole it from them. I was doing a whole lot of different, different crazy stuff that could have got me killed. Even when I joined the Nation of Islam, I was, doing, I was putting myself in, in different positions where I could have been, been killed. I, I've had two pistols just like this. Up to my temple, people wanted to blow my brains out. So I did not, I had no idea that I would be here today speaking with you. Many of you are not going to be able to, to see what I have seen. Why are you joking and making fun and all whatever? And another thing too, being an old man, I'm still in pretty decent shape, health-wise. There are many people my age laying up in nursing homes, can barely walk, and all kinds of stuff. So if you make it to my age, will you be able to say that also? Mm. Damn, my rheumatism is messing up in my back. I got to get another chair. I'm just joking. <laughs> but, uh, and then when it comes to this pro-black stuff, I've been there, done that. I was pro-black. I was I was black conscious. And some of y'all was chasing white women. And some of y'all was still in baby diapers, taking a dump on yourself. And I was pro-black. I was black power. And you were spitting up on yourself. You were throwing up on your mama's shoulder, drinking that Similac milk. Cause your mama didn't find you worthy to put it, put you on her breast. That's why your brain ain't developed properly. You can't think straight. That's what I wanted to ask Bakari too. I want to ask them guys, was they raised on Similac milk? Because I, cause it's impossible for you to be raised on Similac milk and your brain developed properly. Cause that Similac fake ass milk, it's impossible for it to, de to develop your brain properly. It's impossible. It's missing a whole lot of things Mama Milk don't have. I mean, has. So, you gonna try to tell me about Africa and Kemen and I already been there. Been there, done that for 35 years. You gonna try to impress me with Dr. Clark and, 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 and all these historians and all that. I ain't impressed by none of that stuff, man. I have been read that, I done heard that crap over and over, over and over, over and over, 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 over and over again for 35 years. You think you impress me? Hebrew Israelite, you don't impress me. I know about that stuff. I know about all that pro-black 
black God. You ain't nothing but some racist wannabe. You just like the slave master. Because if it was not for white supremacy and racism, none of that stuff would exist. Show me where the Hebrew Israelites and, and the Kemetics and all that pro-black, where did it exist before racism, white supremacy? It did not exist. It came from that. It's a result. It's a response to racism, white supremacy. That's where it come from. That's the bottom line. You know it, and I know it. And it, it, has drunk, it has drove you out of your damn mind. You're crazy as a bat. And don't blame me. That's your problem. That's your problem. I have nothing to do that. Don't blame me because you crazy as hell. I'm bringing you the reality from my 35 years of experience. I have been in the game for 35 years. And yes, yes, it has produced a little something, something. But in the grand scheme, scheme of things, it has done nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's still not doing nothing. And you keep doing the same stuff. Marching, having a parade, uh, voting, protesting. Go get your education. When I was growing up, that was the main thing they always said. Go to college. Get up. Go get your education. And in 2008, 2009, when Barack Obama became president, all these people with these degrees, in California was standing on a line trying to get fries at McDonald's with their degrees. That's not the answer. Your answer is bigger than all this stuff. You have to change as a human being. You pro-black, you are color, but you're not a damn human being yet. And that's where it starts. You're not a human being yet. You gotta be a human first. You are a product. I'm black. You are a product. You something that's not even a lie, just something, some definition, and you lost your humanity. That's why some of y'all so nasty. You have no respect for human life. That's why you can go to another man and call him gay, and you know damn well he ain't, or cuss somebody out, you know, because you're not human. You don't see me as human because you don't see yourself as human. You are a caveman in modern times on your all fours mentally. In a civilized body, you look civilized, but mentally you are caveman, grunting with a stick in your hand. And the old pictures of the of the caveman, they used to show that the caveman had a big stick grabbing his woman by her hair with a big stick, dragging her across the ground. That's why y'all same thing you do with our sisters. Grab them by the hair. They ain't nothing but property with a stick in your hand, and you beat them to death. All these sisters beat up and abused and exploited. The only thing they are to you is a damn baby making machine. Cause you're a caveman in your cave. And you and you don't have no light up here. And see, I mess you up because you think you see the light. I am the light. I am the sun. I am that. I am what you're looking for. Not divine. I'm just your little brother. My eyes have become open because of my 35 years of experience. I've been through that nonsense. Brother Talib have been through that nonsense. I don't want you to come continue to go through that nonsense because I know, Talib knows, and many brothers and sisters know, it's a road to nowhere. You got to think different. Do different. You got to change. You got to become a human being first. You're not pro-black. You're not committed. Be a human being first. They asked Bruce Lee in an interview. They said, Bruce, do you feel that you are more American or are you more Chinese? Bruce Lee said, Bruce Lee said I'm working to be the best human being I can be. See, that's what they want you to do. Get stuck in all this race and this comedic and all this stuff. And you forgetting and you just ignore your own humanity. And that's why you don't treat each other like human beings. You treat everybody like things, something to control, something to dominate, something to use. Give me my money, donate to my Patreon, donate to my GoFundMe. You just um, some trash I can use. And that's all, that's all you see all over YouTube. You wanna control something because you know you're being controlled. You wanna control the woman, because you know this pickle will control your happy ass. So to make yourself feel like a man, 
You want to control and dominate the woman, women and children. Oh, that's real manly. All oh, the women in their weeds. Oh, the, the women do this and the women. I ain't never been around so many weak ass men in my whole entire life. I ain't never. I've never seen that before in men. I've never seen that. I'm trying to get with a woman. I ain't in nobody. I don't, do not want to beat her. And then you wonder why you don't have a woman. <laughs> and you're beating her up. You see her as a tool, a piece of trash, just something to use. My woman, my sister is equal to myself. And I don't mind following her. If she show that she got leadership skills, I'll be right there. I'd rather look at her behind than yours. Because to me, that's really gay. Following behind a man. I'd rather look behind a woman than a man. That sounds gay to me. So you can get angry all that you want to. You can flag the channel all that you want to. People are getting sick of it. They're getting sick of the old, old crap. Same old, same old. Time, time is revealing that this stuff is rolled to nowhere. Time is revealing, not me. I am on time. And so people are saying, well, what, what, what do we do? What do we do? We're bringing the answer, what you have to do. And we need to do it before time runs out. That's the key. Can we do this? Can we make a move before time runs out? That's the key. Or you're gonna stay mentally dead in your, in your slumber. Loving your dreams. You know how it is when you're in a dream, you're in a fantasy world, especially if you are with a woman or a guy that you might like. You don't want to wake up out of that dream. Somebody is, hey, wake up. You uh, uh, uh. see, that's how it is with me. You don't want to wake up. You know what I'm saying is on point. You know what I'm saying is true, but you in that sleep, you're in that fantasy world, Wakanda. Uh, the, the spaceship, the, the, the mother plane, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, Jesus, he got, he, 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 don't wake me up. I mean, just, yeah, just, see, that's where you're at. Angels trying to wake you up, trying to bring you to rally. Come on. The alarm clock is ringing. And that's what it's about. That's why you don't like Angel Snuffing Up 7, because Angel Snuffing Up 7, keeping it real. Yes, I'm old. And sometimes I am stupid. You are correct. But I'm not a fool. And I'm not going to stay a fool. I know better. And I know I know that you need to do better. I have 35 years of experience in this. We could do better. So on that note, I said my little say to get the ball rolling. Because we, we all old here. I don't know. Talib, is a, he's a little younger than me. He's old. Uh, no, are you old? I don't know. Mm, I think I'm old sometimes. But see, they think that, that people with age is, is fool. How in the hell did you think I was able to get to this point being stupid? All of us here have a little age on us. We did not get here being stupid. We could have been dead with a toe tag on our bodies a long time ago. Hell, if you listen to Brother Gary, he'll tell you. He could have had a toe tag a long time ago. Doing dumbass thing. He's still here growing. He's growing older. You don't get younger. And as you grow older, you're supposed to get wiser. You're supposed to get smarter. So, just because you don't like what I say, don't mean I'm stupid. I know some things. I learned from the old man in the street that's drunk. Just because he's an old man in the street and he's drunk, He's an old man. He got experience. There's things that you can learn from. But y'all young and you're pompous. And see, you think that you can't die. But when that bullet hits your ass and you fall and you take your last breath, the last thought in your head is, damn, I could die. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The old man's still here. See? Hmm. So you make it mark of older people. I'm stupid. If I'm so stupid, then why can't you deal with what I present to you if I'm so stupid? If you weren't so damn emotional, I wouldn't have no, I wouldn't have no problem debating you. But before you can even get started, you start crying over because your, your feelings get hurt over your little belief. 
Oh, don't talk about, you talking about my Jesus. You talk about my minister, Farrakhan. You didn't start crying like the brother was on here today. He was whimpering. You call me a nigga. I ain't no nigga. Are you serious? And you really, uh, and you, ex you expect the white man to, to respect you. See, I know you talk tough on YouTube and we'll kill the white man and kill all the babies and y'all put on a good show. But look, just like I told the brother in the last video, the Quran said, don't think that you're gonna believe and not be tried. Because let me see how tough you are, because it happened to me. Let me see how tough you are when the Petra Woods come to your door with that damn battering ram and knock your door in and throw tear gas grenades in your house and shoot your dog in the head. Where is your black power? Where is your Jesus? Where is your Allah? Where is all that stuff? When that happens, ask Tariq, ask Tariq Nasheed when the police came to his house. Ask him where all that black power was. Why wasn't he running his mouth talking about this, this is racism, white supremacy. This is red. He didn't open up his damn mouth. He was in his pajamas, dropped his happy ass down on the ground, and put his hand behind his back. That's what he done. Don't kill my kids. See? But then, after that whole incident was over, he right back on his channel talking crap. But we see what you was about, because when the, when the man came to your house, we see how you act. And what was your boys? All these people that love you, Tariq. They love, I love Tariq Nasheed. What was they? Contesting that your house was, was invaded like that. What was they with signs? Why y'all do that to, you know, police brutality and all that for Tariq? Nothing. Nothing at all, period. But Tariq really don't give a damn as long as you send that them, them greenbacks to him. He'll get over it because that's all he's about, money. He don't give a damn about your education. He don't give a damn about your life. Hell, he's married to a woman that's a biracial and her Caucasian mama. And y'all just sucking it all up. Fake ass stuff. Which I don't have no problem with that. But the way he talks, look how he lives, though. I'll talk all that blackly black stuff. You don't have a black woman on your arms. You don't have a, a, a black mother-in-law talking all that pro-blackly black stuff. Some of these niggas don't even look dark. Brother, don't make an excuse. Everybody black. Apparently, you are colorblind, sir. When you go to a paint store, look, when you go to a paint store and ask for black, you don't bring out brown. You bring out black. You go to a paint store and ask for black, and they bring out brown, you won't even turn it away. Hey, say, man, that ain't what I want. That's brown. Black is not brown. Brown is not yellow. So I'm just using their logic. They talk about I'm pro-black. So I'm, I'm using their logic. Because you ain't black as me. <laughs> You're Rashida Stover. So we are the examples of black. We got the melanin. Your ass don't. You light yellow, brown, ice cream, Hershey chocolate bar, whatever the hell you are. You ain't black. I'm pro-black. You're not pro-black. <laughs> so in my arrogant position that I put myself in, I can call you some kind of biracial. I can call you some kind of mulatto in my position because I am that. I am the black. You brown, red bone, half yellow, Arab looking. I'm, I'm pro-black. I'm the real pro-black. Y'all fake. See, I could play that. And what could you really say? Well, <laughs> light skin, black, black, Blacks produce that. No, that's because that's a, yeah, black do produce those other colors, but that's a recessive gene. The teachers of Abu Elijah Muhammad, that's the recessive gene. The real gene is black. Brown comes after black. You're not black, you're brown. So I can play that. Hey, what's up, Brother Bakar? So uh, I can play that role if I want to play that role. But that's not what I'm about. I do understand that we come in various colors and shapes and sizes and all like that. 
and I embrace all of us because all of us deserve freedom, justice, and equality. It's as simple as that. But you don't represent black folks. You represent a certain clique and your brotherhood and your sisterhood comes with strings attached. Nobody should want nothing to do with that. My, my brotherhood is real. Brother Gary can say, say whatever he wants to. We've been back and forth. Who gives a damn? My, myself and Sister Noble, we've been back and forth. I don't care. We still together. All of us still together. Who cares? <laughs> don't trip on that. And we was going back and forth over damn mythical characters. <laughs> Mythical stories. Oh, that was that was a I'm terrible. Still, I mean, I'm still flabbergasted. Yeah. Over, the, over some of the dumbest arguments we've had over some mythical tales. Yeah. But anyway, you know. Continue. Continue. Well, I didn't want to. I didn't want to hog up the program because basically, I I want to express, but I wanted everybody to come here and show show the audience. That because you old don't mean that you're stupid. We have learned things in life that you can learn from. Mm. I'm not old and stupid. You may not. See, this is another thing. Sometimes you can't even comprehend. A person is on a level you can't even comprehend. And see, really, that's your problem. You can't even comprehend. You're so bogged down in that little stuff that you into, you can't even comprehend where I'm coming from anyway. You can't even comprehend. It reminds me of, of, the, of the Karate Kid. Remember, the Karate Kid wanted uh, that, that Kung Fu guy to teach him martial arts, and he came to his house and made him wash his car and paint the fence and all that kind of stuff. And Ralph Macchio, who was playing the Karate Kid, he just got tired of it. He said, man, I'm sick of this. You make me, I'm washing your car. You supposed to be teaching me Kung Fu. And the only thing I'm doing is washing your car and, and painting the fence. Then the man said, look, how did I show you how to, uh, you know, whatever? He said, show me the move. And he was him. And then he would throw a punch and do that move, and he blocked the punch. He threw a kick, and something that he was doing while he was washing the car and painting the fence, he blocked the punch. He was learning martial arts and didn't even know it. See, because it was beyond his comprehension. He had no idea that he was learning martial arts. Only thing he thought he was doing, I'm painting the fence, I'm washing the car, and got sick of it. That's why you can't comprehend. Don't call me no liar, because I'm not a liar. There's nothing to lie about. Don't call me some trick trickster or scam artist or whatever. Your problem is you can't even comprehend. Because you stuck, first of all, you stuck in the past. You stuck in with Jesus and Allah and all that stuff from 5,000 years ago. You, you stuck with people. Yeah, Brother Bakari, wax on, wax off. You stuck in the past some damn way. This is 2019. I'm thinking about the now. I'm thinking about the future when I be dead and gone and rotten in the grave. I see 3030 right now. You can't. You can barely see 2019. I can see it plain as day. Like the like the founding fathers of this nation. They could see beyond their time. You can't do that. You stuck in this in this this void that is that's not real. In the past, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, all them people are dead. I love them. You know I love Malcolm. Well, I love all of them. All my people, because if it wasn't for them, I couldn't walk the way that I walk. But they're, they're gone. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, uh, I just want to chime in and say this. You know, for those who say that they're not slaves, yeah. well, I mean, I'll say this here. Get a white man his job back. Huh. Matter of fact, uh, Give back his uh, Benjamin Franklin's and George Washington's and Andrew Jackson's. And also give back everything else that come from him if he's not a slave. Right. I mean, it's just that simple. That, that's because simple. Everything, everything in this country that we live by or under 
descended around the Caucasian. That's right. Rocks. That's right. I don't give a damn what it is. It could be your house, your car. It all comes from the, ca the Caucasian. So if you're not a slave, matter of fact, your, your degrees, your diplomas come from him. Yep. You understand? Yo, 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 your food come from him. Your Medicaid come from him. The same pharmaceutical drugs you get at the drugstore come from him. You see what I'm saying? Yes. The same hospitals you go to to get treated for, for illnesses, he runs and controls. So if you're not a slave, then you get out of this kitchen. Absolutely. Simple as that. And, 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 and plus, it's like this here. See, just like Brother Talik explained to you, I've been through some stuff in my life. I've been in prison twice. You know what I'm saying? I done ran the streets with a gang when I was younger, okay? I was, you know, into breaking in folks' houses and homes, cars, you know what I'm saying? Robbing folks, mm -hmm. doing crazy stuff like that that could have gotten me killed. Caught up in drug addiction, all of that, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I was at a point, the one time, I didn't care if I lived or died, straight up. But I'm still here. Yes, at sir. age 51. Yes, sir. And I thought like that in my late 20s, when the cops pulled them 12 guns on me. And from that time, I went to the penitentiary for the second time of my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still here. Yes, sir. We even talk about it. You know? I'd have had guns pulled on me. I'd have been shot at. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said before, I'm not even supposed to be here. Yes, sir. But I made it do. You know, so, like I said, that's why I take things serious as I do. Like yes, I said in my other video. That's why I take things serious just the way I do. Because I know life is not a game. Yes, sir. You can lose it just like that, as quick as, as it comes. You know? So, like I said, and plus, I've been out there on the street since I was eight years old. Mm. You know? My mama helped raise me the best she could. You know, her other half wasn't around me all the time. You know what I'm saying? But I had to do what I had to do to survive. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is not a game. This is for real. And I try to reach out to other people with soul to let them know that we could do something better than this. Because a lot of us come from broken homes. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have been to the penitentiary. There's a lot of us that's homeless. In middle institutions, in prison and jail institutions. Some of us ain't gonna never see a day of light again. Some of us sitting on death row. Mm -hmm. We still got black people that fought for us, or dark skinned descendants of slaves that fought for us during the 60s and 70s. That fought for our liberation that's still sitting in these prisons and ain't looking forward to our day. Okay? And ain't none of us turn back to, to, to try to help them with anything. Mm -hmm. But because of them, we ain't to even speak the way we speak on social media. You know what I'm saying? But we don't consider that. So like I said before, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't really have patience for a bunch of bull crap. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm not going to be putting myself in no position so when somebody say something to me and I, I got to say something to me and I got to act on it. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I don't play the games that a lot of these people on social media play. I don't get down like that. 
That's why you ain't gonna hear me debate. That's why you're not gonna hear me call. Now, I have discussions like I have with videos, like with yourself, Sister uh, Noble Levine, Brother Gary, and those that are like minded. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to sit up there and, 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 and just get caught up in a bunch of trash talking. You know, because I know what that leads to. Like I said before, a lot of people, especially on black YouTube, social media, Facebook, Instagram, you know, they call cases either in prison or in their early graves because of emotion. You know what I'm saying? Because they want to kill or hurt somebody because they don't agree with something they say. You know what I'm saying? And all that stupid stuff. You know, and, and like I said, one thing about it, I'm going to say this here. If one person can't say what they want to say, but you going along with other people saying what they want to say, then that's just being uh, partial. Mm -hmm. That's not impartial. You see, when you're being impartial, you fail, but when you're being partial, you're out there. You know, and, 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 I, and, I, don't, and I don't like dealing with people like that. So that's why I have less associates, even on this social media platform thing. You know, and like I said before in another video, you understand, I don't get on these videos. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to make friends. I'm trying to bring reality to our fellow uh, soul brothers and sisters throughout this nation. Yes, sir. Wake us the hell up. Yeah. So we can free ourselves from this uh, slave bondage we And with that said, for now, I'm going to pass it back on to you, brother, or whoever wants to speak. Okay. Um, very good, brother Tiller. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm too, I'm too old for game playing. And you're right. I'm old. I'm too old for game plan. You're absolutely correct. I'm too, I'm, too, I'm too. You know, I don't have to do nothing. I don't owe black people anything. Okay. I'm not responsible for black people. I'm not responsible for them at all. I'm not your messiah. I'm not your hero. I'm not a savior. I owe black people nothing. Now, if black people want to do something for themselves, I would help. I would join in the cause. But I'm not Jesus. I'm not going to die for your sins. It's not going to happen. All right? So you can get angry at me all that you want to and tell me what I need to do. Like I said about the Mississippi campaign, if people show me they want to get on board this choo-choo train and really get something really rolling, I'm in, of course. But if you don't want to do nothing, then I don't want to do nothing. Then I would spend my time with the people with like minds, and we would talk among each other and don't include you because you made your decision what you want to do. So I have nothing to do with you. You know, if, if, if the white man don't shoot you in the back of the head, hey, you lucked out. That's good. But should one day you get that knock on your door like the Jews did, where we going, boss? Don't you worry about where we going. Get on the great school bus. That's going to be your last ride. I could be right. I could be wrong. I don't claim to be divine and some messiah, and some prophet. But I understand the history of this country. I understand what has happened before. And what they say, history repeats itself. It's just somebody. It's just somebody else that it happens to. And guess who number one on the list that they wouldn't mind exterminating? Guess who? The Popeyes chicken eating sandwich people. That's that's who they want to get rid of first. That's all you were eating a damn Popeyes chicken sandwich, fighting over weed, shooting over drugs and territory that you don't own. You're actually killing people in neighborhoods. 
Talk, this is my territory. You don't own a damn thing. How stupid. And you and you think somebody wouldn't want to get rid of your ass? What are you worth? <laughs> hey, if you don't if you don't laugh, it'll make you cry. It'll make you cry because it's really, really sad. And see, this goes to show the continued failure of the pro-black community because it's thousands and thousands of, of pro-black folks and they have no influence over the people at all, really. <laughs> because the people look at them like they're a bunch of clowns. They don't take them serious. Just begging for money, getting with the women on YouTube and Instagram and whatever, just hooking up with them, get a baby with them and leave them. They're a bunch of trash, just like the people that's lost out there in the streets. Ain't no difference, except they said, black power, you black power trash. They don't pay child support. They barely, I can guarantee you, well, I don't have to get, I know how many black power folks on e getting EBT cards. I already know the ton of them on welfare. Talk about a law of black power, Mr. Farcon, with your food stamps in your hand at shopping say. I already know it. You know why? You know why? I was one of them. <laughs> so I, I was one of them. I had an EBT card. I had, I had them food stamps. I had the EBT card and the food stamp. <laughs> <I'm not wild. laughs> that's why that's why I know that's why I know <laughs> y'all perpetrating the fraud as they say oh, God. not real <laughs> You're not gonna get no help. He, he said, you know how I know? Uh, <laughs> he said, "You know how I know? Because I was one of them." <laughs> what? Oh boy! I so I don't know what to do with you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting them there food stuff. I lot walk bar and all that stuff. Oh, I had the food stuff when it was paper, and I had the EBT card too. <laughs> Black Power family eating the hell out of some government cheese. That government cheese was good. Hell, I don't use that. There wasn't nothing wrong with that government cheese. That's the key. Especially the pepper, the pepper jack. That was some good cheese. Yeah. But see, y'all, because you're not going to get no help from Minister Farrakhan. He ain't going to give a dime. You part of the comedic stuff, they're not going to help their people. You don't get a dime. I already know it. Hey, brother Talib, tell them, tell them what they gave you when you was part of that. Uh, a new wabi in it. Tell, tell them what they gave you. Oh, uh, uh, they, um, they, they, uh, the, the, the food that they was feeding uh, us was slop. <laughs> oh, my God. That yeah, was just slop. They'll cook it and just throw it all together, just prepare it any kind of way. And, uh, you know, it, it might have been some damn uh, peanut butter or. Uh, some brown peanut mashed up peanut butter stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To live, don't even know what the hell it is. He said some peanut butter stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and if you and if you didn't if you didn't have the money while you was out, uh, you know, peddling their products. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, brother uh, Gary know what I'm talking about. He was in that same organization, but. <laughs> yeah, you know they they uh, <laughs> you didn't have if you, if you didn't have the money to buy nothing for yourself, or you could make no extra hustle and money on the side while like you was out there peddling they, they products and stuff. You just, you just was uh, brought out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you either had to eat what they what they fed mm -hmm. you, uh, or, or, or you just starved. I guess you know. <laughs> I don't, yeah. Uh, it, uh, it was crazy. Hey, was crazy. you remember you telling me about the Nation of Islam? You know, what did you get for lunch with them? 
Yeah, number two poor. Poor rate. Yeah. yeah. What, what happened to that? Wow. I mean, you know, there's a lot of brothers and sisters out there homeless in the street. Y'all ain't even got no housing for them. Right. But y'all talking about building a nation. Come huh. on, please. Miss me with that. Hmm. I was in the I was in the nation of Islam under Farrakhan for a, a strong at least seven years. And I was there for about nine years, for a strong seven years. And the only thing I got out of the whole seven years, out of the whole nine years, uh, was to burn a bean pot. <laughs> and that's the only thing. That's the only thing I ever got. They wouldn't give me a good bean pot. I had to wait till you know they was deformed or burned up or something. They wouldn't give me a good bean pot. Deformed or burned up. Yeah. Damn. I mean, it was edible. I mean, it was edible. Uh, everything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let them go to waste, but still, that's all I was worth is the burn up bean pies, the deformer, the one that you probably, you know, you didn't care nothing about. Mm, 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 and, I, mm. and, uh, and they had a perfectly good room. They had a perfectly good room I could have used when I was staying there, but I couldn't pay the rent for the room. So I slept on pickle barrels down in the basement. Mm. Yeah, pickle barrels. That's, it's, you know, it's amazing. I slept on those pickle barrels and didn't fall off. But I can get in a bed and fall on the damn floor. <laughs> you know? <laughs> 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 Ain't that some stuff? How the hell are you going to sleep on... How are you going to sleep on some pickle barrels? And some people say, oh, nigga, you know, how you going to sleep on some pickle barrels? I put pickle barrels under my legs, put one under my butt, one under my back, and one under my head. So about, like, five pickle barrels. And you lay down. And I put my hands across my chest and just lay there. And that's how I slept. 
and did not fall off the pickle barrel. But I can get I can get into a bed and fall off. Here I am, 18, 19 years old, fresh out of high school. I really never had a job in my life. Them brothers know this. It's not like they don't know. They know this. Nobody tried to help me. Nobody. I was on my, including my relatives. Not only are they my biological relatives, but they are my Muslim brothers and sisters. They didn't help me either. What does that tell you about these organizations and stuff? And I would think people like Brother Ben and some of these other people, because they can keep a little money in their pocket, they can be comfortable, they make excuses for that. There's no way to hell. If Sister Noble or you or Gary or anybody close to me, you don't even have to ask for it. If I heard that you was in trouble or needed a little something, you don't even have to ask me. I'll break you off. I said, here you go. What's this for? Because you need me. Because you need me. And I got it. You my brother. You my friend. You my sister. Then what? In the nation of Islam, it says, want with your brother what you want for yourself. Whatever. Give a brother. If you have a, a bowl of bean soup, half of that bean soup belongs to your brother. That's that's the teaching. You, you don't see that in action. Everybody out for themselves. Everybody mm -hmm. going to the temple, showing off their pretty car and all the stuff that the cracker allowed them to have. Mm. They don't share nothing. And a lot of them are supposed to be selling them their final cars and stuff out on the street. Them brothers, because they got money, the ones with money, they'll take them final cars, a whole lot of them, buy them themselves, throw them in the back of their trunk, and throw mm -hmm. them away some damn work. Or they might give them away. They don't try mm -hmm. to sell them. Because they got money. Me, because I didn't have a dime in my pocket and I needed that little chunk chain, I sold my newspaper. But them brothers got money, they didn't have to do that. I saw a brother, and I'm I, I saw a brother with my own eyes. He opened up his trunk, a big, thick stack of them papers. I'm like, wow. He ain't even selling his paper. Because he got a good job and he just bought the paper. Ain't selling a damn thing. I'm on the street with mine, hustling. I'm on the street. Nigga, if you don't get away from my car with that bull, you can get away from me. That's what I was dealing with. He didn't have to worry about it because he had to deal with the people. So I knew the people because I was out there with them. I was with the ones that said, get the hell out of my face. I was with the ones that said, hey, brother, let me get one of those. But I was on the street. They were not on the street like me. When they went on the street, it was for show. That's, that's what they was doing. And Farrakhan and a lot of those people know they don't give a damn long they get the money for the newspaper. They don't care really if the paper gets sold or not. They don't care. As long as they get the money. So um, I'm old. I'm not stupid. Even them, even them Pecker Woods, when I was locked up, they're not going to tell you I'm stupid. They're not going to tell you that. They know better. I'm not stupid. You might not agree with what I said. Say, and the reason why you don't agree is because you can't comprehend this black conscious, comedic Hebrew, uh, more science temple, pan African, African stuff. It got you in a limbo, it got you in a state of rigor mortis. You're not really, you're not alive. Your mind is stiffened. You ever see a body in rigor mortis when a body first dies, it's, it's flexible. But then they have a, a condition called rigor mortis, and that's when all everything starts tightening up. You start stiffening up, and that's how it is with you in your mind. So you suffer from rigor mortis syndrome, and so and so you and so you can't comprehend somebody because you're dead. You think you're alive, but you're really dead. You can't comprehend somebody that's alive. That's your really your main problem. Cause I have not I have not done nothing to you. Sister Noble has done nothing to you. Brother Khalil has done nothing to you. You just don't like the truth. You don't want to be awakened. You're in your slumber. You're in Wakanda land. You're in Jesus. You're on planet. You were robo or whatever the hell that is over there. You, you, you done died and came back and you're a ball of gas flying through the universe. You know, 
You mm -hmm. wearing a cape with an S on the back of it. You know, you everywhere except reality. And, and I'm I'm shaking you. Wake up, brother. Sister Nova is wake, is pushing you. Wake up, sister. To leave, we waking you up. Oh, I can't. Let's leave. Leave me. Let me. You want to sleep? And that's what it's about. Because I have never done nothing. All these people that hate my guns and don't like me, I've done nothing to these people except challenge their slumber. That's all. And that's a personal problem. I have nothing to do with that. People always hate the ones that wake them up. But when they finally wake up, they appreciate it. Woo, I'm glad you woke me up. I made it to the job on time. I can pay my bills. Woo, I'm glad you wake me up. It was a fire. I could have got burned up. When you wake up, you're going to say, you know something? That reality is jumping. Wow. Thank you, brother. But I was asleep. But we kept waking you up. I'm old. But I ain't stupid. And I have learned in my 30, 35 years. I've done this black conscious stuff already. You're not telling me nothing new. You are impressed. It don't impress me. I've been there, done that. I don't go backwards. You can't teach me nothing. I don't go backwards. Don't tell me about Jesus. Don't tell me about Kevin. Don't tell me about the Israelites and the curse of what God put on black folk. I heard all that stuff before. I don't go backwards. I go forward. I go beyond a time I can't even live. I see 3,030. You can't. You can barely deal with 2019. I understand what needs to be done in order to change the condition. I'm not talking about some lollipop sucker stuff. And I know you are insulted because I'm talking about your work. Oh, he called my work lollipop, you know, and, and, you know, little sucker stuff. Because that's what it is. Little. It's trivial. It don't mean nothing. It, you have to do something big to affect the 40 to 70 million that's living here. It has to be something on a large scale. Something that can inspire them. Something that shows that they are a winner. Something on, on a magnitude, when they see it actually coming into reality, they could be a crackhead or a drunk. But they'd be like, wow, that's so great to them. It'll make them stop drinking. It'll make them stop smoking. Because they actually can see something that they build it with their hands that's real. And they can get high off of their own success. But you're not, you're doing little tabby tabby stuff. You know how they play on the piano. You're not playing a full song. You just want to tap on the piano. Yeah, tappity tap tap. You don't want to play a full song. And that's what's required a full song with some vocals and some bass and some drums. You just want to be on the piano. You know how like little children do? They don't know how to play the piano. They just get on there and just tappity tap 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 tap. That's why you cannot comprehend where we come from. Because I already done my little tappity tap 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 stuff 35 years ago. I'm ready. I'm ready for a full blown orchestra. That's what I'm ready for. And that's what we're ready for here. Full blown orchestra. So, again, yeah, I'm old. You, you might not make it. I'm proud. I'm 56. Five, six. I'm five, six. Four more years, I'll be six zero. I'll be happy to be six zero. No big deal. Because a lot of folks are not going to be able to see it. My uncle just recently died. He's not going to see six zero. I'm at, I'm at the age he died. We barely make it 50 some years old. Myself and Sister Noah was talking about this. We barely make it 50 some years old nowadays. Cancer, getting shot in the damn face. Something is killing us. We can't. We can barely make fifty now. And you gonna make mockery in front of somebody that has actually survived and made it? We don't know if you are gonna be able to make it, bro. Or and if you do, will you have cancer? Will you be having a heart attack, diabetes, and the list goes on and on of these diseases and ailments that we get? Arthritis, rheumatism. Going blind, can't hear. Good Lord, we need Jesus. They can't hear. They can't see. They can't walk. Where's Jesus at? Waiting on Jesus for 2,000 years. My boy ain't showed up yet. 
Because I sure would appreciate that healing. I'll take the healing. <laughs> I would. <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> Ain't no shame in the game. I'll be, I'll, be a, I'll be an apologizing sucker. I'm sorry, Jesus, but you know folks were tripping, and I didn't really know if you was real or not and believe, but I showed you. Just forgive me, my Lord. Uh, can you throw a brother, brother a, little, a little hands on the head, Daniel? My damn rheumatism is bothering the hell out of me. And why you had to pull out this cancer on the side? And why you do that? Could you give me a pedicure? <laughs> Oh, that's a little bit too. That's a bit too much, my lord. I, I, I say that for tomorrow. We got to keep it real here. This is the reality step on earth. Why are you expecting less? Hmm. And even, even my audience, because sometimes I try to be, I try to get a little spiritual, so you say. And my audience even warned me, "Hey, man, don't go out there, don't cross that line." Cause see, that's not what we're about. My audience tell me. Don't get spooky, man. You start to sound so darn. No, they don't want me to cross that line. People that come here want me to keep it real, and that's how it's going to be. You want fantasy and fiction? Go to the pro black channel. They feed you all that I'm not a slave stuff, and they work in the white man's job, drinking the white man's water, <laughs> paying the white man taxes. <laughs> Looking at the white woman's ass go down the street because you 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 got to see the white woman's ass on the street because they put up naked butt with the with the string in her ass everywhere everywhere you go there she is with that string in her ass and she just giggling <laughs> damn but that goes to show you what man gonna want his woman to show her ass out in the public so other men can can lust and and and, and you know and and, and lust over. Mm, mm, mm. That goes to show you what kind of man the, the, the white man is. But then he had the nerve to, to kill somebody because they winked at a white woman. Because they saw some white woman's panties or drying her. But now in 2019, there she go down the street with a string in her ass and giggling. I, I miss USA. <laughs> really? You need to miss your ass, your your USA ass in the back and put on some clothes, cause she don't have a man either. The white man just use her too. She's just something to use, something to have, baby. He don't give a damn about the white woman, and the white woman knows that. But she got this privilege, and she don't, she's not gonna want to. She don't. She's not gonna want to lose all that. Better than nothing. She knows she's being used, cause no real man, no real man wants to see his woman on a pole. Going up and down a pole. No real man wants his woman on the street selling her body. These are not real men. None of them. And you got black men in the strip club. They throwing dollars and, and whatever. These are not real men. And you wonder why the sisters are all upset. No, you don't have a man. Matter of fact, the black woman has never had a man since slavery. You've never been a man. So Brother Bakari is wrong. You are a slave because you've never been a man. You've never been independent outside of this, this man. So how the, how the hell are you going to tell me you ain't a slave when you ain't never been a man? You are still a slave. You ain't never been a man. If you're a man, then put your woman in her own house. Give her her own school. Her own farms. Her own uh, businesses. Her own daycare center. Give her her what she can call her own. You ain't been able to give her nothing. You can't even give her a job. Then you get mad at her because the white man give her a job and she make more money than you do. And you want to feel like a man. <laughs> you make more, you know, because you upset because she make more money than you do. Yeah, but black women go to college. They get an education. They do things in order to make more money. What you want to do? Lay up on your ass, play video games, be a pretend hustler, go out there, get your ass whooped trying to sell drugs. That's what you do. Drop out of school, do dumb ass stuff. And you want people to sit around here and babysit your ass and feel sorry for you. I'm not, see, pro black folks make excuses for black men 
and they feel sorry for your happy ass. You're not going to get that here. When you stand up and be a man, I will call you that. Until then, you're a comfortable ass slave. And I will include me in it too. When you a slave, you're damn right. Because if you're a slave, I'm a slave. I cannot rise no higher than my gender. And that's why I'm angry and mad at you, because now you make me a damn slave too. Because you're a slave. I'm not going to baby fire you. Go to, go to Zaza Ali channel. Uh, go to Sinatra TV. Go somewhere where they, somebody will baby fire you and give you some Similac milk. <laughs> <That'll pass it. laughs> You're not going to get that here. I don't baby fire men. Y'all too damn old. You're, you're, you're 29 and 30 and 40, 50 years old. I'm not, I'm not here. To, I'm not going to baby fire you. You be a man, then prove it. Earn it. You just want to be called a man simply because you got a penis. So what? A dog got a penis. Is he a man? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, hey, check this out. And also, too, if you were truly a man instead of a slave, you would be able to have a defense against the racist that's blowing up, that, you know, killing off our children right. and women. Right, right. You know, like the Trayvon Martins, the Michael Browns, the Ed Gardners, the Esel Fords, the Alton Sterlings, you know, yeah. and, 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 and the list goes on. I mean, you know, yeah. the, the Tamir Rice, <laughs> yeah. you, you, you know, you, you have a defense against that. Right, so absolutely. how can you call yourself a real man and you don't even got no defense against that type of stuff? Nothing. They, they want to laugh at the Mississippi campaign. Mississippi campaign, I know it's a very, very complex, very hard project to do. But if you put your, but, but if you put your mind to it, I know that we can be successful. And people, people don't have to call you a man. You have proven yourself to be a man by taking control of this state and running and controlling and doing whatever the hell you want to do in this state. You can do that. So only a man can accomplish that. See, that's why you talk about, oh, Mississippi campaign is a pipe dream for a boy. Yeah, it's a pipe dream for a boy. Yes, it is. You're not man enough to pull it off. The only thing your happy ass can do is sell T-shirts and DVDs. Matter of fact, I bought one, see? The Black Power Cartel. I bought one from Sarah Soon said. That's all they can do is sell T-shirts. DVDs, come to my debate. That's the best you can get out of these people. And march and have a parade. That's all the men can do. That's all the men can do. You angry at me because you're supposed to be a man, so much is expected. You're not living up to being a man. You're a slave, you're a comfortable Negro slave. Why don't you just admit it and confess to it. I would rather you just say, I would rather you just say, look, I'm a comfortable slave and be done with it. And that's why I hate it. No, no nationality respects for Africans, for those of you that are uh, uh, pan African and pro blacks. They don't even respect us because we see we ain't even man to protect our women and kids over here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a man. I'm old and I'm stupid. But guess what? All my life as a little boy, I always looked up, looked up for a man in my life. There was none in my personal family. I did not see my grandfather as a man. I saw him as abusive and domineering. I did not see manhood in my uncles and my father. I didn't see that. I was looking as a little boy. I'm looking for a man because I know I'm supposed to grow up into a man. What does that look like? I did not. I see. I see men, physically grown men, but I did not feel they were men. I did not feel that. The first time I felt as though I was connected to a man when I started reading the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. That was the first time, and he was a man I, ne I never met who was in a book. So, 
That's what the women are waiting for. When the men get themselves together, you don't have to worry about weeds. You don't have to worry about fingernail polish and all this other stuff. Y'all worry about what the sisters do. Get yourself together. Show them that she got a man because a woman want to please a man. And if you as a man say, well, baby, you know, that, that weed stuff, believe me, she ain't going to have no problem because she want to please her man. She want to look good for you. talk to lesbians all the time and I know what I know what they say out of their mouth oh I'm lesbian you know I like women and blah 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 I, I I'm looking at them I'm talking to them I hear what they say out their mouth but deep down inside I really I really truly don't believe that's what they want they really wanted a man and if the right brother come around a lot of them you'll see them they'll get with that brother now, if you're really a homosexual, if you're really a lesbian, how can you turn that on and off? You know, you talk about, I'm a lesbian, but when the right brother with the right line come to you, then all of a sudden, you get with the brother. I thought you was a lesbian. Well, uh, I'm bisexual. Ain't no such damn thing. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no such thing. You lie to yourself. Either you want or the other. You never was that. A lot of sisters turn to women because of bad experiences with these men. Right. Right. That's the reason why. I was locked up with a lot of lesbians. Right. And you know, I really wasn't serious, but I used to hit on them a little bit. And I think I'm looking at them deep down inside. They don't want they don't want no woman. They don't want no woman. They wish they could have a, a good man. But something happened. You know, they've been abused by men, cheated on by men, done real bad by men, and another sister brings comfort, and then next thing you know, they're involved into, into this, you know, this type of thing. And, and and it's really temporary. That's not something that they really want. It's not. But uh, we talked long enough. Damn, we talked a long time today. Almost four hours. And it's not fair. Y'all had me do all the talking. That's not fair. No, brother, that's why I chimed in. <laughs> that's not fair. But it's all great. It's all great. It's all great. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, you know, this is the reality of the situation, you know, uh -huh. that's plaguing us as people. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. ain't, nothing, ain't nothing manly about being a uh, a so-called pimp, hustler, gangster. Yeah. Ain't nothing manly about being in the penitentiary, you know, a yeah. jail, but because you've been locked up, so that makes you tough. Ain't nothing manly about that. Right. You're still, you still, know, in the Caucasian's eyes, you're still a punk, you're still a nigga, and you're a slave. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as far as they're concerned, they're going to keep you in your place like that until you rise to that occasion of what a, a man is supposed to really be. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you know, and, and, and you even got these brothers in the in, in so-called pro-black conscious community going around, you know, talking about their man, but what have they done to really cool their man? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you so much as I respect brothers like the Honorable Malcolm X, mm -hmm. who's from here, you know, 
two by weight, which for me in Nebraska originally, mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, Marcus Garvey, you know, brothers like that. You know, I, I have high esteem, respect for them because of what they, how they stood on their uh, principles, you know. But at the end of the day, they died. They did not die a man. Yeah. And they, did, they died slaves. Right. Absolutely. They did not die a man because they did not rise to that position of what a man is really supposed to be. Right. That's right. And uh, on that note, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. I do thank you. I thank everybody for joining us. It's been a long day. And uh, Oh, man, how can I forget? I got my Facebook on. It's finally working. What's up, Facebook? <laughs> yeah, Facebook finally working. It, it usually it was going out for some reason. Peace to my Facebook family, everybody on Facebook. And, uh, of course, everybody on, on YouTube. And, again, I, want, I would like for you, you don't have to do nothing. I know you don't have to do, do nothing or whatever. I would appreciate, I would appreciate that you do support our soul sister, Noble. She has a new website, ancientcreationmyths.com. Check out that website. The link is in the description box. Support our brother, Talia, Eric Bell. The link is in the description box. Support our brother, and I thank you for joining us today. Matter of fact, every chance, every opportunity, if I send him a link, Brother Gary wants to be with us. He's he's right here, you know. He's our family. Brother Gary. Uh, his link, the link to Brother Gary's, uh, the link to Brother Gary's uh, channel is in the chat room. But he's, uh, he's cool, cool cutter. On YouTube, he's Gary Wilson on Facebook. So support our family here. And uh, if you would like to donate, you want to show your brother, brothers and sisters, uh, any kind of appreciation from for the content that we bring to us on this platform, if you want to do that, because I'm not asking you for nothing, but I know some of you just want to show appreciation, you can register with I think it's Zelly. I think that's how they pronounce it. Zelly, something like that. It's in the uh, description box, and you can do that. Also, um, if you want me to, I can customize a, a subject just for you. Talk about that subject, and we can we can talk about that. I can send you a shout out. Uh, you you are the one sponsoring this video. If you want me to give you a shout out, I will. If you don't, I just say one of our wonderful subscribers. Uh, this is a custom-made topic, custom-made video brought to you by this, this brother or this sister. And, and it's, it's all good. You know something? Before I go, I just want to I just want to kick this in the air. It's, it's too late right now. And I don't know if we have the time because I, I know I'm always talking about do we have the time? Do we have the time? And it's too late this year. But I really would like just, just for brotherhood and sisterhood. You know I have something every year that I call Soul Liberation Day. And it's too late this year, but I would like for us to maybe meet in St. Louis. I will run a room. Just get here. Just get just get to St. Louis. I'll, I'll rent us a, a conference room and I'll make sure that y'all fed. Just get here. I pick you up. I make sure I'm available. I pick you up from the airport, the bus station, and bring and take you to your hotel rooms. Just get here, and I would like to have Soul Liberation Day, 2021, in St. Louis, and just be able to meet my brothers and sisters, all of us who think alike. I would like that would really, really be nice. Just, just for brotherhood, sisterhood, just to see everybody and. You will get to, you'll be able to listen to your brother 
feet live. Wouldn't that be exciting? Because <laughs> I know I'm cool on video. I'm either I'm even cooler when I'm right there in your face and can see your eye, your beautiful eyes, and can talk to you in person. That would really be some cool stuff. And we would have a year to get ready for Soul Liberation Day 2021. I'm just kicking that in the air. If y'all might be interested in that, send me an email, put down a comment, let me know, because we have a whole year you know, to, to do that, to prepare for that. On that note, it's time for us to get out of here. I thank you again for everybody to, for uh, listening, who's listening in the chat room. Thank you, Brother Gary, Sister Noble, Brother Talib, my Facebook family. Thank you, everybody. And I really appreciate it. Until next time, y'all, as Dr. Neely's always tell us, I wish us love, peace, and so, right. We're getting ready to go off air. And I'm back. Peace. <laughs>